This, of course, is the Toyota Land Cruiser 200 Series. With the next generation 300 Series not too far away, does this represent your last chance to climb into a big V8, capable and comfortable four-wheel drive Land Cruiser? Well, let's check it out. For even more details on this Land Cruiser, read my full yarn at carsguide.com.au. And if you're watching this video on YouTube, hit like, share it with your mates, and make sure you hit subscribe too to stay up to date with all of our reviews. This is the Sahara, the top spec 200 series in a four variant range, and it costs almost $125,000. It has a 4.5 litre V8 twin turbo diesel engine, a six speed automatic transmission, full-time four-wheel drive with dual-range gearing, a limited slip centre diff, and a stack of driver assist tech. But read my yarn for all of those details. The Sahara also has a cool box between the front seats, wood grain look steering wheel, and throughout the cabin, cooled front seats, heated front and second row seats, driver seat memory settings, and entertainment screens for the second row passengers. It also has a moonroof. In terms of dimensions, the 200 series is 4,990 millimetres long with a 2,850 millimetre wheelbase. It is 1,980 millimetres wide and 1,970 millimetres high. It has a listed curb weight of 2,740 kilograms. So from the outside, the Land Cruiser looks massive, but on the inside, it's a bit squeezed for cargo space. You'll see here with all three rows in use, there's not a lot of room. We've got a first aid kit, air compressor. You could probably fit a few other bits and pieces in there, but you won't be able to squeeze a lot of stuff in there. But what is good is that you do get a 220 volt power point, uh, and that is about it. For 125 grand, there's not a lot going on at the back here, but let's check out the third row seats. Now, it's a bit of a leg up into the third row, but lucky for me, I'm like a nimble jungle cat. Uh, you saw the evidence just there. The seats are pretty flat, uh, not really supportive. I wouldn't want to spend a whole lot of time here, but that's, that's an old story with third row seats for adults. They're, they're really for kids only, but there are plenty of storage spaces, two cup holders, little sort of stash away spots for bits and pieces, cup holders, a few more in the middle there. Yeah, you've got air vents, lights again not a lot happening for for, for the money but uh, yeah it's comfortable enough okay so the second row we're getting up towards the the business and pleasure end of the land cruiser you can see there's a lot more going on here second row passengers have a lot of controls uh, for the aircon uh, for the seat warming uh, all that sort of thing. They've also got DVD screens on the back here, which I guess the people in the third row can have a gander at over your shoulder. Uh, you've got this armrest here, and I think, yep, there's the remote for the DVD screens. Uh, you've got a bit of a grippy space there, probably for your phone or the remote. Cup holders, you've got some nice sort of tension mesh pockets there on the back of the seats. Um, all in all, it's not a bad space here in the second row. It'll be fine for your teenage kids. Let's check out the front. So up front, it becomes a little bit more of a premium space. Leather inserts on the seat and around the cabin, wood grain highlights uh, on the steering wheel and on the dash there. Sort of that chrome look finish to things. It, it's starting to feel and look uh, a fair bit dated. Up the front here, that multimedia screen doesn't help a whole lot because it's a bit clunky to use. You do get some storage spaces. You've got the cool box in between the driver and the front seat passenger. You've got cup holders there. And here's a pretty handy sort of wireless charging tray uh, if you want to throw your phone in there. It's all well put together. There's nothing wrong there, but it's just, it doesn't feel like a plush interior to me it doesn't feel like it's worth the price so the sahara is a bit posh and a bit practical but what is it like to drive on gravel or well-maintained tracks 
you really get an appreciation for just how settled and composed the Land Cruiser really is. It's got cool springs all round, independent front suspension and a live axle rear and it all just sits really nicely on the road. There's plenty of visibility. The only thing is the bonnet does feel quite large and, and you'll see later on when I do some hill climbs uh, going over the top of the crest the, the bonnet sort of really obscures your forward vision. But it's not a deal breaker, it's not terrible, and you do get used to it. If you've spent any time in a Land Cruiser, it won't even register on your <laughs> awareness scale. Steering is light and responsive, and that's important for such a big beast. This thing's almost three tonne. I mean, it's quite a big unit to steer around. It's got a turning circle of 11.8 metres, which is not crazy stuff for something so large. The thing is, at times, it feels like a big vehicle to steer around, but more so in the city and car parks and urban settings, rather than when you're out on an open dirt track like I am now. The 200 series turbo diesel V8 really is a simple, powerful and effective engine, and it works supremely well with that automatic transmission. And the thing is, the 300 series We'll have a smaller engine it's going to have a v6 diesel and a v6 petrol option so it's no surprise that it's a great open road tourer but how is it off-road is it still as capable as it has been in the past i've got a lot to get through so bear with me first up that big talky v8 engine it's unreal and it works really well with the automatic transmission there's plenty of torque at low revs, and you can always rely on it. But as well as good low range gearing, wheel travel, and just all round suitability for four wheel driving, you can also call upon a stack of driver assist tech. I'm talking about things like the multi-terrain system, which uh, gives you the capability to dial through the different terrain modes. Uh, there's loose rock, rock, mud and sand, moguls, and that, tweaks the throttle response, tweaks the braking, the traction control to suit the terrain you're on. And it really is quite effective. And you have crawl control and that allows you to regulate your speed. And again, to suit the terrain, visibility is great all around. You've got plenty of open glass at the front rear and to the sides. But if you find that it's a little bit pinched, you can also use the Land Cruiser's multi-terrain monitor. And that gives you a view at the front and the back and down the sides. But I wouldn't rely on it. It's easily dirtied up. And besides that, it also gives quite a basic sort of distorted view anyhow. So I wouldn't rely on that. I'd get out, I'd walk the track to see where you're going to drive. Uh, I'd uh, at the very least stick my head out the window to make sure you can see what's going on. It's on all terrains, but those all terrains aren't as aggressive uh, as I'd like. Uh, I'd put some aftermarket tyres on there uh, and maybe tweak the suspension a little bit. But all round the Land Cruiser, it really it retains that four-wheel drive capability that you'd expect. And as standard, the top spec Sahara gets the KDSS system. Now that firms everything up on road but it also acts almost like a sway bar disconnect off-road. So while it does have decent wheel travel as is, the Land Cruiser automatically uses that system to get a bit more suspension flex, a bit more wheel travel, so you can get that wheel to the dirt and you can keep moving. It has been raining, so the hills here, it's a sort of clay surface, so they are quite greasy, but you'll see also Another fun thing on the monitor is you can see sort of tilt. You can see the slope that we get. I think we go off the charts here. Yep, there we go. We're sort of off the charts. And the cruiser just creeps up there. Bit of steady speed. Nice controlled momentum. And over we go onto the near flat up the top. Too easy. Just going to go down this hill again. You can see through the monitor that you can see where your wheels are going to go. We just want to take our time here because it is quite wet and slippery. 
And down we go. Yeah, the engine braking and the hill descent control, it feels like it runs away a little bit. It is big and bulky, but it is very capable. You've just got to do some considered driving. Make sure you watch out for trees. There's a few trees sort of close into the track here, and the back end can slip out on steeper, slipperier hills. But again, up we go, over we go. No worries at all. You just take your time. It just does it comfortably. The 200 series has a 5 star ANCAP rating, 10 airbags and plenty of driver assist tech including blind spot monitoring, rear cross traffic alert, multi-terrain monitor, front and rear parking sensors and more. Fuel consumption is listed as 9.5 litres per 100 kilometres combined. I recorded an actual fuel consumption of 12.8 litres per 100 kilometres on this test but I did do a lot of low range four wheel driving. The 200 series has a 93 litre main fuel tank and a 45 litre sub tank and that's a total of 138 litres. It has a 750 kilogram unbraked towing capacity and a 3500 kilogram braked towing capacity. The 200 series has a five year unlimited kilometre warranty. The Land Cruiser remains one of the best large four-wheel drive wagons on the market. It really is capable and comfortable, but the cracks are starting to show. The interior feels dated, that multimedia system just isn't up to scratch, and the price tag, especially at this spec, it just feels too much. I don't think you need the top shelf Sahara, but if you've got the money and that's your sort of thing, well, I say go for it. But I'd opt for the GX or the GXL, the lower specs, because they'd make ideal platforms as an off-road tourer. What do you reckon? Have your say in the comments section below.